I'd like to go back in time right now to 2004 and introduce you to two people who, who had an idea that resonated. Their names are Paul Myhill and Bill Driscoll. You see, they were trying to buy a company that was developing a synthetic version of superoxide dismutase, or what's called a mimetic of SOD. Now, they weren't successful, and the idea fell through. But the idea of what SOD could do in the body resonated with them. And so Paul, who had a bit of a biology background, started something that created a ripple effect that's brought us all here today. He started doing some research. He Googled and he went to, to uh, websites like pubmed.gov to see if there were some natural ingredients that could possibly help increase the body's production of SOD. Now, along the way, he found out that in his own backyard was one of the world's foremost authorities on free radical biology and medicine, Dr. Joe McCord, the actual co-discoverer of SOD. And so he and, he and, and Bill filed a patent a provisional patent on all of these ingredients with the hope of creating something that would increase SOD, and made an appointment to see Dr. McCord. Now, Dr. McCord's research, research at that point was not really on plant extracts so much, but Bill and, and Paul's idea intrigued him. He was at that time associated with the Web Wearing Institute of Free Radical Biology and Medicine for, and Antioxidant Research that was affiliated with the University of Colorado Medical School, and which is featured on the ABC primetime piece that all of you have seen. And, when they, and, and so he took those ingredients and worked with them under contract with what was then called Lifeline Therapeutics, and they created the product. That product's known as Protandum. Well, that ripple effect, absolutely, right? That's why we're all here. That ripple effect that brought Dr. Joe McCord into contact with the company that resulted in the, in the creation of what we call ProTandem has had broad and profound, far-reaching implications that all of us are part of here today. Now, from that point on, something very interesting happened. This idea of, of increasing the body's production of antioxidant enzymes, of course, had long resonated with Dr. McCord, but it also resonated with the, with the producers of ABC Primetime, which was the only reason that this tiny little startup company was able to get featured on a national news story like that. It also resonated with the investment bankers and investors who provided the, the capital to start up this company and get it going. And it also resonated with tens of thousands of viewers who saw the original ABC Primetime piece. But remember when I struck the A note to the E tuning fork? It deadened it. What happened when that tremendous deluge of energy of consumers coming to the company, it really stopped the company's growth, growth and progress? Something, ha something else had to happen. Well, all of us probably remember the time when we first were introduced to, pro to, to ProTandem and LifeVantage. I know I remember. I was driving along Midland Road in Poway, California, when a lawyer friend of mine called. That sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? Lawyer friend. But it, it's, it's true. <laughs> lawyers do have friends. Most of them are other lawyers, but it's OK. But anyway, I got this call. And by that time, I'd already successfully had the opportunity to build several large, successful supplement companies. And I thought that I pretty much knew every supplement that there was in the industry. But ProTandem was a mystery to me. And I was very intrigued. I wondered how in the world had I not heard about a supplement a product that was the recipient of the most positive news story in, in the history of the industry. Uh, a product that had patents and peer-reviewed published studies and human clinicals. Frankly, like many of you at the beginning, I didn't know much about oxidative stress and the myriad health problems that it caused. But the idea resonated with me, and it was something I really felt was important. And I knew that this product had great possibilities. Now, at that time, the company was selling primarily through the internet and at and GNC. In fact, on a monthly basis, the, the company was selling about one half of a bottle of ProTandem per store per month. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. David, the problem that you guys had was you, you were trying to sell half bottles. Well, I know that's an old joke. I've used it before. But what really happened was that the ABC primetime piece acted as a catalyst, kind of like striking the tuning fork. But it couldn't be sustained. And there was no label or store clerk or television commercial that could tell the powerful story of ProTandem like, like all of you can. So I mentioned that I was pretty good at, at creating ripples, which I am. And when I went to the board of directors of the company and suggested going into network marketing, 
I caused some major ripples. In fact, their initial reaction was probably like many of yours when you were first approached about joining network marketing. They were, they were dead set against it. And in fact, they had some real stereotypes that some of you have encountered yourself. But then, when I explained to them that the, fa that the largest companies in this industry are network marketing companies, that the fastest growing companies in this industry are network marketing companies, and that the only ones that are succeeding uh, internationally um, are network marketing companies, there was a flicker of interest. You see, the company was a lot like some of you. It had a lot of potential, but it wasn't really, wasn't really realizing that potential. It was barely hanging on financially, and it really had no great prospects before it. So there was this flicker of interest, and they basically said, well, we might as well try it. Noth nothing else has worked. Well, through some previous uh, ripples, I had been able to meet Eric Marchant, who's our Vice President of Compliance, and Ben Seaman, who's one of our VP of Sales. And we got together, and we put together a compensation plan, and we put together budgets, and we put together some rudimentary, and I emphasize rudimentary, <laughs> marketing materials. And in, 2000, in January of 2009, we were able to sign up our first distributor. Now, we worked hard, but we didn't set any, any records. But in, but in February, as I was in the Denver airport, I got a call from Eric Marchant. And something historic, a, a real ripple effect that's affecting us here today, started at that point. He said that he had heard that some very successful distributors from another company were looking to join a new company. And I said, well, do you know any of these people? He said, yes, I do. And I said, well, can you get a meeting with any of them? He said, I think that I can. And so I got on a plane. Instead of going home to San Diego, I flew out to Salt Lake City here. But I missed them. I wasn't able to, get to meet with any of them. But Eric had gotten a hold of somebody named Jason Domingo. <laughs> Have you heard of this guy? Yeah. Yeah. He, he, a great guy, right? And, um, and Jason had only taken Eric's call because Eric had been his lawyer, and, and Jason thought he was calling about something totally different. All right? And so you know how those lawyers are. They, they're kind of sneaky that way. And so he gets him on the, on the call. And he starts telling a story of Protandum. And there was something about it that resonated with Jason and the other leaders that he spoke to about it. And they said that they would fly out to San Diego to meet me. Well, at this point, this story might also seem familiar to you. Here we were. We were inviting some people over, so to speak, to learn about the life vantage opportunity. But we were a little embarrassed about our tiny little office in San Diego and how that might be perceived. So I said, well, let's not meet there. Let's meet at a friend of mine's house in, in Point Loma. Oops, that's ABC Prime Time. So in this living room, in Jan Stroh's house in, in Point Loma in San Diego, is where we first met together, and I had the opportunity to talk about Life Vantage and Pro Tandem, and talk about the business opportunity to some potential distributors. Now, actually, I think anybody that was there uh, would say that that meeting in Jan Stroh's house was very instrumental to all of us being here today. But you know what was also very instrumental? this bottle of Benadryl. See, Jan has cats, and she'd put a bunch of these cats away in the back room. And that was, where the, that was the first time where I met um, Jason Domingo, Tyler Daniels, Marcel Niederhauser, Kirby Zanger, and Gene Tips. And after a while, um, <laughs> Marcel starts wheezing and sniffling. And he stands up and says, do you have cats? <laughs> and all of us, as he's standing up, could see all the cat hair on the back of his pants. <laughs> And we say, yeah, I'm pretty sure he has cats. If it wasn't for that bottle of Benadryl, none of us might, might, might be here today. But, you know, talk about being on the same frequency. When I met and talked with those guys, we all wanted the same thing. We wanted to build a company that was that, that's just all too rare, one that's based upon true science, true products, and real people. Right? One that, could, one that has a legacy, a legacy that we can be proud of. And we knew that it was possible. And we knew that the story of, of Protandum could really succeed in this marketplace. And I recognized that in order to avoid the problem that it had occurred when the ABC primetime piece aired, that of growing too fast and not being able to handle it, I was really going to need these guys. So over the next days and weeks, this became my home, the Hilton Garden Inn in Sandy, Utah. I've been there so many times that when I first, joined, when I first went there, they said, uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for coming. After I kept coming there for week after week, they'd say, Mr. Brown, it's good to have you back. Then they would say, David, good to see you. Now they don't even clean my room, and they tell me to take out the, my own garbage. But, <laughs> but, uh, but nevertheless, like many of you, when you're building your life-managed businesses, 
I spent a lot of time away from my family. We spent a lot of hours into the wee hours of the morning planning and budgeting and, and creating what we call Life Vantage in this opportunity. It was reborn there in this, in this area. I met other leaders. All these leaders that are arrayed before us up here, these pro nines and pro tens that are here to, oops, I let something out of the bag. We have a pro ten, but we'll talk about that later. But these guys, if you look, and the back, and you guys are only seeing the back of their heads, but you'll see them over the course of, the, of this convention weekend. I think I met every one of these people uh, over the, the, the next few days. And I, we had to make sure that we resonated and the story fit with each one of them. Because none of them were going to make the commitment and join this company unless it was something they truly that they truly believed in. Now, time won't allow me to mention everybody that's brought us to this point today. The, the investment bankers, the, board of, the members of the board of directors, and other people who joined the company. In fact, the whole dedicated team of employees that we have that I think is the, the best in the industry by far. Please, give them a hand. As I said, time doesn't allow me to talk about all of those guys, but you'll have a chance to meet many of them over the course of this weekend. But what the point that this brought us to is that we are one of, if not the fastest growing companies in the whole entire industry. Give yourself a hand, you're part of it. Yeah.